Just like that, we've turned an old piece of hardware into a, pre into a very secure PFSense router. This project came up when I was having a discussion with my buddy Pat. You've seen him in earlier videos. Actually, they were in PFSense videos. And uh, we're talking about making a router for a, a friend of his uh, as inexpensively as possible, but making it pretty secure. So, of course, we want to use PFSense. So, how can we do that? Well, we actually happen to have this HP Thin Client sitting around, and uh, we can find them on eBay. So, you can check out like this one right here, where it's been configured with an Ethernet card inside, and the guy even says, look, if you have any problems, give me a call, I'll be able to walk you, talk you through it over the phone, getting it configured. Uh, they're pretty popular devices to be set up as PFSense routers. It should be faster than a 3100, and maybe even comparable to a 5100. I think we're gonna try and do some uh, speed tests and evaluations and see if we can you know, see just where, where it fits in that lineup. If we do, you'll see that video right here. Click on it and check it out. But let's get to setting it up. What are the steps? First step, we need to download the software. So we're going to go to pfsense.org download. I just Googled pfsense download. You're going to get to the right location. And here it is in front of us. We have to select a couple different options. So like the architecture, we're using an AMD64. And the installer, we're going to use a USB stick. So... Oh, console, VGA. Got a VGA monitor set up over here. So download that file. And that's all we have to do. We'll wait for that download to uh, get down here. You know, it is a .gz, which is a zipped or compressed file. So we use uh, 7-zip to unzip that. You can use that program or any other unzipper of your choice. We'll give that a second to download and then we'll, we'll open it up. And we're gonna write to our USB stick using Rufus. Another great program. You know, all these programs will link down in the comment section. So if you, you want to follow along and get all the programs, you can do it right down there. Make it as easy as we can for you. With the file downloaded, we just want to write that image to our USB stick. So let's just open up Windows File Explorer, right to Downloads. There it is. We can right click on it. And if you got 7-Zip installed, you can extract the files here right from the Windows menu. Let me start up Rufus. Uh-oh. With Rufus running, let's run through the selections. It's already finding my USB stick that's inserted. I want to make it an ISO image. We're going to select the file. And that's from our downloads. Right there. That is not it. That is the zipped file. You'll find it right here as the disk image file. Don't write the .gz. And everything else Rufus knows, right? So we're just going to hit start and let it run its course. Everything's going to be erased. Are you sure you want to do that? Yes, yes we are. Let's get that done. With your disk image written to your USB stick, we're done with our laptop. It's over to our hardware. Let's make the jump. With our USB stick, we're going to insert it into our any of the USB ports on the thin client. Super position of a USB stick for sure. And then we're just going to have to reboot it so that it loads from the USB stick. Computer off. Computer back on. Let it do its magic. You cannot see it on the video of this of this screen right here. It's blown out, but that's the EULA. So hit enter. And your option number one is install PFSense. And that's what we want to do. Let's continue with the default key map. Guided disk setup. And the top option is guided disk setup. Let's do that. Yeah, we're gonna wipe the entire disk. It just wants you to confirm here. So yeah, entire disk. Are you really sure? Yes, we are. 
Now that we said we want to erase the entire disk, format the entire disk, it's asking us for a partition scheme. It's defaulted to GUID partition scheme, partition table, and that's what we want to do. With all your options selected, just hit finish. And commit to let it run. It's a very quick installation, and at this point, it's asking us, it's telling us that the installation is finished, and it's asking us if we want to open up a shell for any you know, manual modifications. We're trying to do the most basic installation and show you just how quickly you can get a PFSense router up and running, so we're going to select no. With the installation complete, we can reboot and write into PFSense or open up a shell. Let's reboot right into PFSense. Important tip. When it reboots, before you see the installer go again, you got to get the USB stick out of there. It's just going to reboot on that. So now we're into the loading off the disk. Important safety tip, Egon. At this point, the router is up and running, and it's telling you that the WAN port is on IGB0 and that the LAN port is going to be used in IBG1, and it's got an IP, uh, IPv... IPv4 scheme of 192.168.1.1. But we don't know which one of our five ports on the board is IBG0 or 1. So we can do a quick test to determine that using an Ethernet cable plugged into our internal LAN port, internal LAN. And we're going to plug into any one of the ports, plug into the first one, like that, and then select one, which is assign interfaces. When I hit one, it's shown me the four interfaces so and I can sign, and it's saying that IBG0 is up. Well, that happens to be the first port that I plugged into, which was the leftmost port for us. It made sense for it to be IBG0. So now we know what IBG0 is, the leftmost port on our client. We don't want to set up VLANs now. We can do that later, so we're going to hit no. So now we're just going to redo what it had automatically assigned, which was our WAN port to IBG0. We just didn't know which one was IBG0 to perform. Uh, proceed forward with our router. So we're just going to type in IGB0 to assign our WAN port. And now it wants to know the LAN port. IGB1, we're going to stay with that. We're finished. We're not going to enter anything else. Just enter to be done. And it wants you to confor confirm that that's the uh, setup that you want. Yes, it is. With those settings applied, we're back at the uh, serial interface. It's showing that we're ready and it's ready to go. And we can see that our the WAN port has an address off of our internal LAN here in the office. And we're going to plug in our my laptop into IGB1, the next port over, and see if we can surf some data. All right, into IGB1. And into your laptop. I got my Wi-Fi turned off. Bring up a command prompt. Yes, I do want Windows to use that network and IP config. There you go. We got 192.168.1.100, the default gateway of 1.1. We should be good to go. Here we are back in our Chrome browser. Our favorite site, Audio Video CT. Check it out. Just like that, we've turned an old piece of hardware into a, pre, into a very secure PFSense router. It's up, it's routing from the WAN port to the LAN port, but it's a basic configuration. There's a little more we can do with the web interface for, the, for PFSense stepping through their wizard. Let's launch that now. And the default username and password for PFSense is admin and PFSense. Let's step through the steps. Let's hit next. Did I hit it? There we go. There's global support in case you're wondering. Our host name, PFSense, if you want to change it to something, you know, we can make it uh, for us STS 
router. Sounds good to me. Our domain is going to be local domain. Our primary DNS, there you go, and our secondary DNS auto filling. Set your time server. We're going to use a default PF sense, and we've selected our time zone to be America, New York, because that's where we are. Next. We're going to be plugged into a cable modem. Most of us will. So the selected type of the WAN interface is going to be DHCP. We really don't want to change any of these other configurations for a basic setup. And hit next. This is what it configured. We saw automatically in the, uh, in the, in the boot. And we're going to stick with that. Let's not change it. And change your admin password kind of a theme here in our channel. You always hear me say, create a strong password. Let's create a strong password. You know what we've used in our other videos recently? We're gonna use that. So we just wanna get through this. I'm using the world's worst password, password. But you won't, you promise me you won't. You're gonna make a nice strong password. All right, let's reload that configuration. Congratulations, don't you feel great? Even got a green banner across the top. You're done. Hey, let's check for updates. Our system's up to date. I'm not really surprised. We just downloaded the uh, most recent version from the web. And we are done. We can go to our dashboard and accept the EULA. Thank you so much. We're up and running. Your router's up and running. From at this point forward, you don't need to use the serial console on the VJ monitor. If you want, you can. This is much easier coming to the web page and administ administrating your router this way. We've got a couple other videos where we create a site-to-site -site VPN using OpenVPN and make a site-to-site -site client and connect them and route it. You can find a link to that video here. And then you're also going to, we're going to proceed from here and do some tests to see just how well this 2016 HP device works as our router, how it performs. And you can check out that video here when we, we get that finished. Otherwise, we're all set with this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please consider giving a like, a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel. If you'd like help with any of your projects, you can reach us at our contact information below. Thank you for watching.